Kubernetes has finally got native gang scheduling as part of Kubernetes latest release, which will be happening in December, Kubernetes 1.35. If you have ever run a distributed training, a Spark Ray on Kubernetes, you probably hit this, that some pods schedule and some don't. GPUs sit kind of idle, lot of resource wastage in the Kubernetes cluster, and then the job kind of get stuck in the half zombie state. In this video, I'll show you what's coming up latest in Kubernetes 1.35. We'll do an end-to-end -end demo and I'll show you what is the new concept of the workload API in Kubernetes and how the gang scheduling is coming to the core scheduler. So let's try to understand first in very simple terms about scheduling. So currently in Kubernetes, there is a concept of pod, like Kubernetes scheduler is kind of pod centric, pod focused. So you schedule a workload and then one by one pods get scheduled onto the cluster. For simple stateless microservices, it's totally fine. But when it comes to distributed workloads or jobs, you often need those groups of pods to be started, scheduled, and run together. For example, the PyTorch, TensorFlow training, or Spark jobs, or Ray clusters, HPC workloads. The problem is if only some of the pods get scheduled, so you get partial scheduling done, resulting in a deadlock. So for example, there are, let's say, 10 pods that you want to run simultaneously and then only your training will start. But since the pod by pod scheduling only schedules five pod and five GPUs are connected to that, other fives are waiting, the job is not yet started and the five of them are already consuming the resources. So GPUs are wasted, expensive resources and jobs becomes unpredictable. Sometimes they start fast, sometimes they never really start at all. This is where a concept of gang scheduling comes in. So gang scheduling means either you schedule all or you schedule nothing. Very simple. If there are five pods that are coming in, so either all five of them are scheduled or all five of them are not scheduled. So that is the concept of gang scheduling. Now traditionally, Kubernetes, as I mentioned, is pod-centric. And there are other schedulers out there that helps you do the gang scheduling. For example, Volcano, Q, Kai Scheduler and others. But natively within Kubernetes, SIG Scheduling is introducing a workload aware scheduling. So this is a new concept. This is coming out in alpha and we are moving ahead with the concept of workload instead of a pod. Now, a core new API type is a workload that is coming up in scheduling.kh.io slash v1 alpha 1 and gang scheduling is implemented. You can check out cap 4671 and then opportunistic batching cap 5598 to batch similar pods for faster scheduling. The whole idea is instead of the scheduler knowing only about the pods, it now understands workloads and workloads is a group of pods. So this is how the workload kind of looks like. Now, in order to understand what's coming up in Kubernetes 1.35, there are two key concepts. One is the workload object that obviously lives in scheduling case v1 alpha 1. And it describes like, you know, the pod groups. And then for each pod group, there will be a gang for which we'll do in the demo. And then in the pods, there is a reference new field spec.workload that tells the scheduler I belong to that workload and that pod group. So the current at the time of the making of this video, the release is 1.35 beta 0. And that's what we'll be spinning up on an Ubuntu instance in a kind cluster. And then we'll enable the APIs, the generic workload and gang scheduling feature gates and create a simple workload and then jobs. And then we'll show all of them are scheduled or if one of them is resource deficient and all three are not scheduled. This is the playground that we'll be using. And in this, I'm using the Ubuntu playground. So I'll run it once. So we are inside the playground. The first step is 
let's check if docker is there okay docker is not there so let's install the basic stuff app update app get install curl and some of the other things and then main thing is docker engine installation system ctl start docker docker ps okay docker is there now now let's install kubectl so case version and then trying to get the kubectl so kubectl okay kubectl is installed now we'll try to install kind and then create a kind cluster with specification so we'll use the latest version and then simple curl command to get kind chmod and then moving it to user local bin. So kind should be there. So now we have docker and kubectl installed on the system. Now what we'll do is we will build the kind set node image for the Kubernetes version 1.35 beta co. For that first we'll install go. So it's simple go installation. Now mkdir p go path source gates io and cd into that. Git clone the Kubernetes repository. This is the official GitHub repository. It will take some time. Now let's check out the branch. Git check out v1350 beta 0. And now let's build the image. So kind build node image and image as kind set node v1350 beta 0. Again, it will take some time to build the image. The image build is now complete. So docker image ls and if you see, you have the image over here. Now what we can do is we'll be creating a kind cluster, but we need to provide the configuration file. So let's create that. VI kind gang demo.yaml. So, this is the simple configuration file where we are explaining where we are having nodes control plane kind set node b135 beta 0 and enabling some of the feature gates. So, feature gates generic workload true scheduling gates dot iov one alpha one true generic workload true and then we also have two worker nodes over here. Let's now create a kind cluster. Kind create cluster config kind gang demo.yaml. So you can see we already have a node image that we built from scratch from the repository itself from the branch v1350 beta 0. And it is using that, preparing the nodes, writing the configuration file, starting the control plane, installing the CNI, installing storage class, and then joining the worker nodes. Within a few seconds, the kind cluster will be ready. kubectl get nodes. You can see it is starting to coming up. And it's in ready status. Now, if you do kubectl API version grep scheduling, you will see scheduling kates.io slash v1 alpha 1. Now, what we need to do is we need to create a workload. So let's create a namespace first, kubectl create namespace gang demo and create a workload file. So this is a simple workload that defines a scheduling policy objects. What it does is it simply says that expect a pod group of workers called workers and treat them as a gang with minimum three pods. So we want all three pods in this group to be scheduled together. So kubectl apply hyphen f workload. Workload is created. Let's now create a pod. So vi pod. So this is a simple pod. So pod worker zero. And then we have to write a new field inside the spec, which is the workload ref. And that we are giving a name of the workload that we created and the pod group workers that we defined. And here we are giving three of them. So one, two, and three. So let's schedule them. kubectl apply hyphen f pod. kubectl get pods hyphen a. We'll be able to see all three pods in container creating state. Now, let's delete them 
So in the namespace gang demo, kubectl delete pod hyphen n hyphen hyphen all, all pods are getting deleted. Now what we'll do is we'll increase the request. So we are pod and only for one, let's give a massive number like maybe 4000 for CPU and kubectl apply hyphen f pod kubectl get pods hyphen n gang demo we'll see all of them are pending so it's all or nothing so it waits until three pods are ready to be scheduled places them together instead of the half scheduling stuff and you can see if you see the events. So I just did kubectl get events hyphen m hyphen n gang demo and you can see fail scheduling. There is one more piece here which is the opportunistic uh, batching kep 5598. When the scheduler sees many pod with identical uh, scheduling requirements, it batches and it batches the feasibility and scoring work. So for maybe large uh, workloads, large homogeneous batch workloads, this can give like maybe 5x, 10x throughput improvement. It's on by default in 1.35 as a beta feature. So you don't have to configure anything for that. So the alpha is just the first step. Now 1.36 uh, for the roadmap for the workload aware scheduling kind of includes auto creating workloads for jobs, stateful sets, job set, topology aware gang scheduling, placing pods closer together, um, single cycle scheduling for the entire gangs, workload level preemption, preempting or protecting the whole gang, not individual pods, deeper integration with cluster auto scalers and the quota systems like Q. So the big picture is that Kubernetes is moving from pod centric concept scheduling to the workload centric scheduling, which is the need for the AI, ML and HPC workloads. So that's native gang scheduling in Kubernetes 1.35. A new workload API, workload aware gang cement takes in the core scheduler and a simple demo how it works end to end. It's still in alpha, so do try it out, test it locally. And if you are already using, you know, Volcano and stuff, you can still start using that because alpha might not be in production yet. When you try this out, I would love to hear like what workloads are you running and what, what's still missing for you. If you found this useful, then hit that like button, subscribe button and share it in your network. And all of the stuff that I have discussed in the video, including the links, including the demo files, I will include the GitHub repository in the description of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Please keep watching and supporting Keep Simplify by sharing it in your network. And you heard first about Kubernetes 1.35 the latest workload aware scheduling, including the end-to-end demo only on Kip Simplify.